name's Ruth Knight. I'm from the Australian Centre for Philanthropy and Nonprofit Studies based at QUT. And it is a pleasure to spend a few minutes with you today talking about um, designing a logic model. Um, just to let you know, uh, my background is in health and community services. I've worked for many years um, looking at how and why we should create social change. And I suppose that's how I got very interested in logic modelling and what it was all about and how we should apply it within our organisations and our communities. So I have a, had a long history of trying to think about, you know, what are the best practices uh, around designing logic models. And I'm, today I'm just going to share some of the key highlights of what I've learnt um, whilst I've been working with many organisations and, and working across the sector, looking at how we can design logic models. So today I just want to spend a few minutes with you just thinking about what the purpose of a logic model is and then what are the key steps to designing that model. Um, I'm also going to try and give you just a couple of case studies and in particular one case study of an organisation I'm working with right now. And then I'll conclude with just a few principles for you to think about um, as you go through the process yourself. So first of all, why do we do this? You know, what is the point of logic modelling? Well, it comes down to a very key question, which is how do we know we're making an impact? How do we know that any change is being created due to the programmes or intervention or activities that we do as an organisation or as a service? And today I'll just use the word program throughout this little webinar, um, but I really mean any kind of intervention or activity that you're doing. So when you're running your program, first, of, first and foremost, it's you and your team that really need to know whether you're making an impact. Is there a point to what you're doing? You know, are you creating any change? Is anything happening or is anyone better off because of what you're doing? So... Firstly, it should be you and your team that's very interested in the results of your work. But also we also, we also have board, your board and, and managers of the program, so other people that are invested in understanding uh, whether it is worth uh, having this activity or investing money or time into this program. So we really, again, have to think about decision makers within your organisation and what you are giving them in terms of understanding what it is that you're doing. The other side of that is the funders and the policy makers. Now, probably at some point uh, you have had to go and seek funding or you want funding for your programme or your intervention. And so there are going to be external stakeholders and those funders, investors uh, or policy makers are very keen to know whether your intervention is working or whether your program is making a difference and in what circumstances. So we'll talk about top context in a moment, but policy makers in particular want to know whether uh, there are any practices or best practices around context and how that, what that might look like for policy. And of course, then those other key external stakeholders are your beneficiaries, the people who are actually uh, benefiting from your program, and the community at large. Why should they support you? Why should they be in um, trust? Why are you a trustworthy organisation or program? Are you really a value to the community at large? So there's many other people as well that might be interested in whether you're making an impact, but these are the key stakeholders and these are the key people that want to know. And so this logic modelling is very helpful to not only communicate what it is that you do to these stakeholders, but also whether you think uh, there might be an impact being created because of it. So, of course, logic models can be used within anything that you do. It really is a very versatile tool. So it doesn't matter, matter whether you're working with children or families or seniors, whether you're working in the environment or whether you're uh, working in, in, in conservation. In practically every area uh, of your work, you can think about how to use a logic model um, because it really is, again, just simply describing and articulating who you work with and what it is that you're trying to achieve. 
So it's a really wonderful tool. And, and once you can kind of master the art and understand the key principles of developing uh, this tool, um, you'll find that it's very helpful to everyone within the organisation. Now, I'm going to use the word logic model throughout this webinar, but there are many other terms. And if you do a little bit of a search, uh, you'll probably find that there are many different ways of describing what we're talking about here. Um, other people use words like program logic, log frame, impact map, program framework, theory of change, chain of causation, and there are others as well. But these are the kind of key ones, and they all sort of describe a similar idea that we are talking about this impact, but, but what is creating this impact? What is our theory of change? I also love the word theory of change because I think that really describes well what this is uh, doing or helping us to achieve. It's helping us think about the change that's creating, uh, that we're creating, and we're, uh, we're trying to interrogate why that is so. So what does a logic model do then? It describes your theory of change it also is a very key foundation piece of work before you plan your evaluation because, of course, it is just a, a kind of theory or some assumptions before you actually collect evidence to, to prove that it's correct, your theory is correct. It helps you communicate your program to internal staff and managers, as we've explained, and it also allows you to communicate your program to external funders and stakeholders. So everyone can really have a very good picture, very clear understanding of what it is that you're trying to do. And, of course, it helps you make decisions about how and if to resource, manage and monitor your program. Because if you have some huge assumptions around this theory of change and you realise those assumptions are incorrect, then it allows you to tweak, refine um, or do something different to make sure that you are getting the biggest impact and you are being the most effective you can with your resources. So designing a logic model is an excellent way to simplify the complexity of your program and assimilate those causal linkages that are assumed to occur from the start of the program through to the impact it makes. And basically what that means then is we are trying to create some links between your activities and your results. And we're trying to simplify that complexity that often incurs in, in health and uh, uh, community services, which is not a very easy sometimes link. So the logic model just tries to simplify that, which is why it's so helpful for anybody within the organisation. Here's a really little example. Um, perhaps you've got a headache and uh, the theory is that if you have a headache and then you take some tablets, oh, and I've put Panadol here, but if you take some headache tablets, uh, then you will, your headache will disappear and uh, you'll be happy again. <laughs> now, this is a a theory of change. It is a theory. It's an understanding that if I take some action, if I have an intervention for a, a health problem, well, then I will there, will, there will be some results and there will be some change. And the impact in this case is positive. Now, that's a very simple theory of change, which we kind of do almost unconsciously as we go about our daily activities. But the reality is, though, that uh, there are a lot of assumptions in this theory of change. Um, number one, that the headache is caused by something that can be uh, addressed by Panadol. Um, also, there's some assumptions around the fact that I have access to headache medication, uh, that, it, that I'm not allergic to it or that I, it affects me in the same way that it affects other people. Um, it might be even against my values or I might not have the money to afford this medication. So there's lots of assumptions that we really need to think about when we create these theories of change and what might be a theory of change perfectly sensible for one person or in one context might not be the right theory of change for another person or in, in another context. 
Here's another one. Um, many people do this every day without even thinking about it. Um, and this is about health again and, and productivity. And a lot of people say, well, when I get up in the morning, if I have a coffee, then I'm going to be more productive and awake. Now, again, lots of assumptions that are made in this theory of change and this, this logic that, you know, people who wake up in the morning perhaps a coffee is the worst thing that they could have in actual fact for productivity. Um, so if we created this theory or this, this logic, we really have to understand where is this appropriate? How, how contextualized is it? Is it good for some people and not for others? Um, is it even the right intervention at all? Should it be something that we're promoting as um, health practitioners or as community services? Should we actually even be promoting this as best practice? So again, it's a really good way of thinking through our theory and how or why it might be a, a good theory. And then how we're going to actually evidence that and, collect, and do some evaluation on it. Now, when we do theory, uh, theories of change or logic models, uh, we really have to just remember that there are different units of analysis, which means that change can occur on an individual level. That might be an individual person, um, but it also can in, um, change can occur on a family level or a, a, a sort of unit level around a family or an organisation or a group or a cohort. So again, we have to think about, you know, who are we working with and what are the demographics or what are the instances of that, that group that we're working with. And then, of course, there also is community and society levels as well. Is our intervention looking at how we're creating change at a larger scale? So what might happen on an individual level may or may not impact a group or it may or may not impact a community or a society. So it's very important, again, when we start thinking about our uh, theories um, is to just think about what kind of unit, uh, units of analysis we're looking at and where is the change occurring. So developing the logic then, so if we're going to design this logic, we need to really do three things. And the most important thing is to actually understand the problem that we're trying to tackle. What is it that we want to change? And how might we go about that? So if we don't understand the problem or we don't understand the desired outcome, then it might be that we create a completely incorrect intervention. So just like the headache example, if we don't understand why someone has a headache, Panadol might be the completely incorrect intervention and not create the health outcome that we want. But if we understand the problem well enough, then it will allow us to... Um, uh, introduce the right intervention or provide the right intervention. So once we've understood the problem and we've had a good look at why this might be occurring, well, then we can think about what we might need to do to address it and what activities or interventions we need to do to um, see if we can get the outcomes that we want. And that's the changes that occur. So an outcome is the change that occurs, again, for on an individual level, a group or a cohort or on a community level. So simply speaking, a logic model is really these three parts. What's the problem? Do we understand the problem? And you'll need to go out and do some research. You'll actually maybe even need to talk to people. You'll need to look at what research has already been done to try and define and understand what the problem is. And then what are interventions, programs, activities that are being done to address it? And then what, what changes we expect or we desire because of those activities? So let's go through these in just a little bit of a deeper uh, look or a, a more finer details of these steps. Now, in a logic model, you normally have a very simple explanation of the aim. It's the broad need that you're addressing and the change you expect. And that's a text which you would just very uh, simplistically describe. Now, of course, that isn't always possible at the beginning of doing a logic model process. So sometimes I'll just make myself some notes about that and I'll do my research, um, but then I'll come back and I'll finish off it at the end of the process because sometimes it's much easier when you've done all your research and you've developed the logic model. So 
have a think about it initially um, and do your research, but um, don't worry if you have to come back to it at the end. But you always do need a very simple little aim statement. Then you're looking at um, your inputs. So if you've understood by the, the problem it is that you're trying to tackle and what are the issues that you're most concerned about, you've really got to then think about, well, what will it take and what do we need to invest in to do our activities or interventions? So inputs are all the resources and the people that you need to run your program. And they can be both tangible things or they can be intangible and in-kind things. So, and of course, it can include your stakeholders as well. Anybody that's involved in investing their time or their funding or their resources to develop this uh, activity or intervention. So your logic model isn't a budget. It isn't a way of, it's not, you don't have to put every line item in a logic model. Definitely you don't. In fact, I often say just group your inputs into sort of major topic areas. But certainly as you go through the process, it can actually help you decide whether you have enough resources, funding and people uh, and time to create this intervention or, or program. So it is a really good and helpful step for you to think about what do we need to, um, to develop some sort of activity. So the next part of the logic model is to actually then say what those activities are. So you've talked about what you need, and if you have those, what are you going to do? So the activities can, can be a wide range of things. It might be things like workshops, counselling, medication, trials, um, meetings, tr uh, events. I mean, I mean, there are many, many things that we do as part of our interventions um, or our programs. So again, you don't have to, if you've got a very complex intervention, you don't need to list everything, but you do need to describe it very simply and quite comprehensively in a way that people will understand what you are actually doing. And um, personally, I always like to make sure that I include evaluation as part of my activities because I think that we forget so much that evaluation and monitoring and measuring the results is, is one of our key activities. And uh, so I always like to remind myself to put evaluation as one of those activities and then it, you can't, it doesn't get missed off then um, because it's, it should never be an afterthought evaluation. And so if you put it in always as part of your activity, um, then you just get used to doing that and then no one can forget that evaluation is a very important part of anything that you do. The next part of the logic model is the outputs and simply this is who you reach first and foremost. So what are the demographics or the context or the area or the region? Who is it that you're trying to reach and work with? Who is your beneficiary or your stakeholders? Um, they could be people that are, are benefiting somehow from your uh, program and they might be direct beneficiaries or there might be some other beneficiaries that are, are not direct, they're indirect beneficiaries. So have a think about everybody that create has, uh, and has some change because of your program. Um, outputs can also be satisfaction. Um, satisfaction usually comes under outputs because it doesn't really describe any change that has occurred, but it is an uh, indicator, I suppose, of results. If someone has been very satisfied with your program or your intervention, um, then there is a likelihood that, uh, you know, they, they, have, they have been affected in somehow. But it's not really a measurement of change. It's just an idea about the results that have occurred. So the results part of the outputs is all of those quantifiable uh, results, things like how many people did you 
reach? Um, how many people turned up to your events? How many people uh, were involved in your health program? Whatever it is that is quantifiable, not necessarily talks about change. And these are the things that are quite easy to measure and things that you can um, collect quite easily in number form. So uh, there you, that's usually where we get up to it, a lot of programs, because that's the easy part. The, the part that isn't so easy is the outcomes, and this is really the most critical part of a logic model because we're talking about what are the changes that occur because of your program or activities. So again, you've got to think about what unit of analysis are you looking at? Are there changes occurring for individuals, for groups or a community? And what is that change that is occurring? Again, I'll, I'll just explain on my next slide the types of changes that you might want to consider. But after that, um, you then think about the impact that you make. Now, the impact is usually the longer term changes that occur and certainly larger types of change. So the community change or real health um, on a real larger scale. I'll explain it on my next slide. Um, but I just wanted to say before I move on that these outcomes must be linked back to that clear problem that you articulated. It must be related because this is why you're doing the program, because you identified a problem. And so these changes must be related to that program. If it isn't clear or you haven't articulated that simply enough, then people are going to get very confused. So what are the outcomes and impact? Uh, what would you put in that column? Well, I like to split it up into short, medium and long. So, and or if you can see in that second one, it's changes in A, awareness or B, behaviour or C, conditions. That's a really easy way to remember it. So the short term things are things that we expect to see very quickly or even during the intervention or programme. So do you see some changes around knowledge, attitudes, skills, opinions, aspirations, motivation, or their intent to behave in certain different ways? And if you're running a program and you want to do a quick evaluation at the end of that program, these are the types of things that you would measure. Because again, you don't know if they're actually going to do any of that or if they're going to use their knowledge and skills to create any change in behaviour. So behaviour, the median types of change, are going to happen between one and three years probably. So these are things around um, their behaviour. Are they doing something different? Are they making different decisions or are different policies or actions being taken or even on a, on a group or a, in organisational level? Are different practices be occurring um, because of people's new knowledge and attitudes and skills? So we really don't know that until probably, you know, 12 months to three years, whether that is occurring. And then the impact is really those longer term, larger types of changes in conditions. So overall types of uh, social health, economic, civic and environmental changes that are occurring on a group or, or um, community level. So again, we, don't, we won't know that till we actually measure that. And sometimes it can take three to five to ten years to really see whether change has occurred on a larger scale. So if we put our logic model all together, we've discussed what the inputs are, what you need um, to create or to Im implement your activities. Those activities are what you do. Um, and then the outputs are the results that you achieve because of your activities and who it is that you've actually created change for. And then your outcomes are what those changes are, are that have occurred. And usually um, it's good to put whether they are short, medium or long term outcomes. And then, of course, if you want to depict some of that impact that you desire, those larger types of change over the long term, well, then you can include that in your logic model as well. So that's a very simple way of um, describing the key components of the logic model. 
Now, here's a few examples. And I mean, if you Google uh, logic models or program logics or theories of change, you'll find quite a few different examples. Some are better than others. And of course, they all look fairly different because, you know, logic models, there's no sort of black and white or, or right or wrong way to do this. Uh, there, you have some uh, creative license to make sure that you talk about your program in the way that you need it to look, um, but really there's, there's no right or wrong way. But typically, uh, a lot of logic models go from left to right. They use a lot of arrows and they use boxes to show those um, how, how it's being done. So that in this case, you'll see that you've got target population at the beginning, but the resources are the inputs, um, but they've also got type and level of program inputs, and then they've got intermediate outputs uh, and then outcomes. Uh, very simply and haven't described whether they're short or long term and they're quite big ones there. But you can see again what they're trying to describe. So you can decide whether that's a good one or, or, or poor explanation of what their theory is. Here's another one. Uh, this is around uh, initiation of tobacco use amongst young people. And again, you can see they've, they've used some creative license to try and lead you to thinking about who's involved, what, what's happening, what activities are they doing, and what might be the short or long terms of that. So take it, have a look at it. And again, you decide whether it's a, a good model for you. If you don't know anything about that program, does it really describe what it is that they're trying to achieve and why they think those outcomes are going to be achieved? Here's another one. Uh, this is interesting because it goes from top to bottom. So you'll see that the components or the uh, the components, they've split it into three different types of components and they've started at the top and they're using the arrows to take you down the page. But again, they've clearly labelled what are activities and outputs. A lot of people do actually uh, combine those two elements of the logic model. So you can talk about activities and outputs in the same uh, context. Um, but, and they've done short-term outcomes and longer-term outcomes so again, have a read of that and just see whether that makes sense to you and whether you feel that's uh, clearly articulated uh, what it is that they're trying to do, who they're reaching and the results that they're looking for. Now, the one I just wanted to talk to you about was Share the Dignity. Share the Dignity is a, a, an organisation, non-profit organisation working across Australia to um, address period poverty. And you can see down on the left-hand side, they've kind of put their aim and address the problem here very simply. So women and girls who cannot access or afford sanitary products experience social, mental, financial and physical disadvantage. They are at risk of stress, isolation, stigma and shame. The lack of education and awareness about menstruation management prevents families and communities from improving health and dignity. And to address this problem, Share the Dignity is working to ensure everyone has good health and well-being by managing their period and dignity uh, with dignity and self-respect. So they very clearly and uh, succinctly described what the problem is and why they feel it is important for them to address this health issue. Then they, then they talk about the inputs, and they've, they've really just succinctly described the key components of things that they need to ensure that they can run their activities. And then they've got up um, to talk about the Share the Dignity vending machines. And so this is their particular program that they are looking at to see whether it does create some change within this particular uh, cohort, which is the young women who are experiencing poverty and are at school um, or um, might be in the community or in housing, um, homelessness services, etc. Then if you follow the arrows, uh, you'll see that they go down to outputs, which is the way that they are measuring their performance. And those are the results and the, the things that they're collecting in a quantifiable manner. And then they go up to outcomes. And you can see that they very succinctly try to pick the top key areas of outcomes. And they have actually said that they are both individual and community outcomes. And then they go down to the longer impact, which is just two very key ones that they want to focus on. And they're very aware that there may be lots of other outcomes and there might be other areas of impact, whether it's um, uh, 
uh, intended or unintended, but by providing these vending machines that provides free sanitary items to women experiencing period poverty, uh, yeah, there could be lots of things, but a logic model isn't designed to capture everything. It's really just to succinctly talk about the key outcomes and the most important impact that you're trying to create. And also, most importantly, it's about those things that you think you can measure and that you can verify through your evaluation. You don't want to put a logic model full of things that you could never measure because of your time or your resources. So don't try and put everything in your logic model. Just the really key things that you desire or you believe that you're you're creating through this program and then the ones that you really want to measure. So this is a guide for you, and it really is going to be the um, basis of your evaluation. And that is exactly why Share the Dignity did this. They wanted to conduct some outcome measurement, and they wanted to prove what it was that their vending machines were achieving. So they had to undertake this exercise. They really had to do a lot of work on this before they started their evaluation. And now we're at the stage where we're looking at how we might measure some of those outcomes and who it is that we're going to talk to and what kind of data we need to collect and who's going to collect it. There's lots of questions that we're now going through and trying to work on in terms of making sure that they can verify this theory of change or this logic model. So so what are some of the key principles then? I think over the years I've found that there are a couple of things that you really need to remember. And the first one is use a participative process. Logic models are never designed to be, you know, developed by one or two people. You really need to take your time to uh, consult, uh, not just with other experts or other academics or people who who have done a lot of research in this area, you probably need to go and talk to your beneficiaries, the people that you're trying to reach. You need to really understand that problem very, very clearly before you try to think of what activities or intervention is going to address that. Keep your logic model simple. It's really meant to be an overview, not complex, not overwhelming enough for people not to understand very clearly what it is that you're doing. So just make sure that it's meaningful and it makes sense. And if you need to show some people once you've developed it or got to a draft stage, go and show some people and say, what do you think? Does it make sense to you? Now, don't let perfection be the enemy of progress. A lot of people think they've got to get this logic model perfect. Well, of course they don't. Um, So just let it be a living document. And if it's a living document, it means that you're referring it to it often. You're looking at the assumptions that you're making. You're, You're really thinking about whether it works in different contexts or with different groups or different individuals. So it's never meant to be uh, something that you kind of design and then, you know, say, well, that's it. It can never change. So importantly, use the model to tell that story of how your program achieves change and and use arrows to help that person follow through from inputs to activities to outputs to outcomes. The arrows really help sometimes. And, of course, it's not just a graphic, it's a way of thinking and it's a way of measuring and managing your organisation or your program. So get everybody involved and include everybody when you're designing it, but also when you're using it to refer to um, when you're managing the program as well. So these are the really key principles that I think that you should remember. And, of course, when you do that, then you can uh, be very confident that your logic model is unique. There's probably uh, you can sometimes have a look for similar ones, but really given your context, your organisation, the time and the resources that you have, um, it is probably going to be unique to you. And as I said, you can be creative because uh, it's up to you what it looks like. Um, But if you want to get a graphic designer to help you or, you know, if you've got someone who's a bit clever uh, with colours, then, you know, make it make it fun and make it really easy to read. But it always must make sense. 
don't uh, overplay the colours and the shapes um, if it really doesn't make sense about the story that you're telling. And remember again that a logic model only represents reality. It is not reality until you prove or have evidence that your program is causing the outcomes that we assume it does. And really that means then that this is the starting point or the foundation to your evaluation work. The next step is to collect evidence to verify your model and your assumptions. And this is the beginning of your evaluation process. And that's where you start thinking about what data, what, um, who do we need to talk to to make sure that we are, uh, what we're claiming is in actual fact correct. So that is some of the key tips from me. I hope that you uh, enjoy developing your logic model and your theory of change, whatever you want to call it. Just make sure that you keep a consistent uh, narrative throughout your organisation so that everybody understands the words that you're using, especially the difference between outputs and outcomes. That's one of the tricky ones that I find a lot of people get confused with. So make sure that people understand the terminology that you're using and then have fun developing your logic model.